Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Animation Success Stories podcast, also called the Ass Podcast. Uh, if you guys have never watched or listened to our show before, let me give you a quick rundown. We talk to animation industry professionals. We hear their stories. We hear the... Are you miming what I'm saying? <laughs> no. No, it's important. We need an interpreter for all the ASL people out there. This is great. Um... We talk to animation industry professionals. We see exactly what their stories were, the hills that they needed to climb, or mountains in some cases, the rivers they needed to traverse. Yeah, I'm doing it too now. It caught on. <laughs> um, and of course, you know everything they needed to go through to get to where to to get to where they are right now. Uh, today, in the ass, we are finding out all about Matt Danner right over here. Hello, everybody. Matt is so deep in the ass. I'm so deep in the ass. Perfect <laughs> voice. Matt, <laughs> let's, let's separate those out just a little bit. I'll be deep in the ass, Matt Danner, and then later I'll be Kermit. Yeah. Uh, How about that? Yeesh, yeah, we gotta, we gotta keep those distant for, no, no, it's for, good. Yeah, for yeah. Disney purposes. Yeah. Uh, if you guys don't know Matt Danner, Matt is a producer, a director, a writer, a developer, and of course a voice actor. We're going to find out all about him and his long history in the animation industry right after this. And we just have a little music. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ass Podcast, Animation Success Stories. Matt Danner's in the ass today. We are found, finding out about about his ass, his animation success story. In the ass, find out about the ass. I should pick one, I shouldn't Let's do both. Count how many times you say ass. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to start believing you in a minute. I know. Um, but before we get into Matt's story, Sabrina and Brian did something pretty cool this week and they're going to talk about it, so take it away guys. So, um, we were invited to the Art Institute of Hollywood, um, North Hollywood, um, and by the academic advisor, she wanted us to come over and review some graduates. They had a portfolio show going on over there. Um, it was me, Nick, and Brian, and after we checked out all the students' work, um, the advisor welcomed us into this, like, little conference meeting, um, with three other game art people. And uh, she just asked a series of questions on how to better their program at AI over there um, because they did trans like they did. They're now instead of a for profit, they're a non profit organization. So they're trying to make changes for the better of students, which is really awesome because me and Nick both graduated there and we were not happy with how things were over there back then. Very public about that, I guess. Yes. Oh, yes. And and everybody was there, too. Even, like, the advisor herself, she recognized it. I think even all the instructors over there recognized it. Um, so it was very awesome that she got input from alumni from both. Um, she actually got alumni from Santa Monica, the Santa Monica one, mm -hmm. too. Um, so we got to give tips and advice and all that. Yeah, hopefully it'll improve their program going forward for yeah. students, especially how it relates to the industry going forward. Yeah, and it was awesome that Brian got to come in on it because Brian, like, even though he wasn't a graduate of AI, he graduated from Otis. Yeah. It was nice to have an outside perspective on how other colleges, you know, handle their programs. It's and then lot, also... It's he, all the same stuff, but there's some different things going yeah. on. Yeah, and you have, like, you're well aware of how things run in the industry because you've been in the industry for a while. So you were able to bring that to the table and, and you know, give little tips and advice for classes yeah. and such. Well, just on that first run through, we also, we saw uh, student reels and then after the reels, they asked us what can we need to do to help improve the program. And already I could see things that were lacking that like, hey, maybe if you include this or maybe this is something like an artist or a professional would want to see or expect to see mm. when they exactly. get out into the industry. It's just like tiny little things that I know they can incorporate into their programs. Exactly. Yeah. So... Cool. That was really awesome, and we might be doing something in the future with her. Her name is Lori Hammond. She's going to come on to the podcast, and also we might actually have a podcast over there. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, so we'll be cool. we'll be doing some fun stuff in the future with that. So yeah, just wanted to throw that out there in case anybody's ever been wondering about AI. It's going to be changing soon for the better, hopefully. Nice. So. Pretty cool, pretty cool. No, not That's dead. great, guys. Wow. Thanks for having us, AI. Not me, but them. I mean us, us, the plural. Collectively. Collectively. Yeah. Yeah, that's really great. We're all AI now. Yep. <laughs> oh, before, also one more thing I wanted to say. What's before up? we get into the thick of things, this is, I guess, officially the first episode of season two. Woo! 
of the Animation Success Stories podcast. <laughs> I was so excited. A A S S or A S S A S S. Oh my god! Yeah. 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 Now you're so yeah. you're so three times. Yeah. I know we're so far up the ass. It's not even crazy. Right? All right, I'm not gonna say ass at all after this <laughs> last, that was the last ass. this very last ass. Okay, there that's it. That's the last. No ass. more. No more asses. Ah, ah fuck. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so as we were saying earlier, today. In the Animation Success Stories podcast studio, I didn't say it. And I love it. <laughs> is uh, <laughs> is Matt Danner right over here? Hello. Matt has a long history in the animation industry. He has a richly woven tapestry of a history in the animation industry. He's been in here for quite a while. Like I said earlier, he's a director, a producer. He's developed things. He's a writer, and he's also a voice actor. And we're going to find out. All about that right now. I'm sure he has some great advice for everybody that that is listening out there. People that are starting out. People that want to be directors, writers, producers. This guy does it all. The wearer of many hats. And we're going to talk to him right now by asking him the first question we ask most of our guests. What is your first animation memory? Oh, boy. You mean in the industry or just in no, general? in general. Little... Oh, man. In general. Uh, like... Little Danner. Little oh, Danner. Like, what were I mean, your favorite animation shows or what got you into drawing? Well, my uh, here's the thing. So so here's something that not a lot of people know is that I actually was sort of born into animation a little bit. Are you oh. animation royalty? Sort of. Well, I wouldn't say royalty. I'd say uh, animation royalty adjacent. Oh, uh, interesting. Uh, but uh, so? so my mom actually um, used to work at Hanna-Barbera. Uh, ah, just before I was born. Interesting. I did so not know cool. that. So she actually had a lot of uh, a lot of um, animation, you know, knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so so when I was growing up, and she would start kind of, you know, parents like to, and as a parent, you know, you like to sort of show your kid the stuff that you like too. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah of course. Uh, so it was a lot of like Yogi Bear, Mickey Mouse, Bugs Bunny, like all the classics, and wow. she knew what they were, and and so. Uh, so you have you, you know. basically your first animation memory isn't isn't as sharp as other people's. This is like kind of a slow burn. It was a lot. Uh, yeah. I'd say if, if you were gonna ask me what's the first thing I remember, it's it's really a toss up between um, Lonesome Ghosts, which is that Mickey Mouse cartoon where. Uh, they're Ghostbusters. Yeah, where they're go <laughs> they're basically Ghostbusters. Yeah. yeah, but that's the one where the ghosts call them up to screw with them. I love uh, that. Yeah, that's great. And uh, and um, Pinocchio, ah. which is a movie I watched over and over and over again. Nice man. Uh, yeah, that's things. pretty cool. How's that? No, good answer. That's fine. Are we off Terrible to answer. Am I, am answer. I ruining this? Can we start over, please? No, I'm joking. That was great. <laughs> Show's yeah, canceled. <laughs> yeah, Lonesome Ghost is 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 embedded early in my childhood memory too. I had like a little, I had like a little viewfinder -y thing. It was like a. Kind of, kind of like this thing you held up against your eye and twisted the side of it. Yeah, yeah. And you could see like scenes from the movie oh, play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember that thing? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't the the one where you switch slides. It's not a Viewmaster. Yeah, it, wasn't a it, was, it, was it was one, one of those clickety clack things. Yeah. Clankety clank. No sound yeah, or anything. Like a penny arcade. Yeah, yeah, and I had the Lonesome Ghost. I had parts of the Lonesome yeah, Ghost. I remember seeing those. Yeah. I feel like I'm well, too that's... young for these. Yes. You are. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, that's yeah. when they got it right. That's when they literally said, okay, we got Mickey, Donald, Goofy. They all work together. Go. You yeah, yeah. Now ghosts. Person, is that... My favorite of that trio is the whalers. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, one, that one was awesome. That was. That's when they're all stuck in the boat, right? Yes. Yeah. And they're trying to kill that whale. Yeah. Was there one where they were like? They're always trying to kill something. That's terrible. I vaguely remember one where they were in an RV. Yes. That yep. was, that was, I think the, that was the, the super was that the third RV. In the... Yeah, yeah, I remember that, that one. That might have been the first they did. Oh, okay. Or was it Lonesome Ghost the first one they had on all uh, It might have been Clock Cleaners, actually. Oh, Clock Someone, Cleaners. Someone's going to fact cleaners, check cleaners, this now, yeah. and we're all, yeah. we're, all, we're, all, we're all wrong. We're wrong on yeah, every all single All of us are wrong. wrong. <laughs> but yeah, but that's when they got it right, you know, because it wasn't just Mickey, it wasn't just Daffy, you or play, Donald. Donald yeah. It wasn't just Goofy. It's great because you play to all their strengths. Yeah. Yeah, like I love Donald Duck cartoons, so I love seeing him get pissed off at things. Yeah. Yeah. And then Goofy's just slapstick all the way. So you combine all that, like Donald getting pissed off at the boat or the RV or the ghost, and Goofy getting slapstick all over the place. He's the one you're supposed to love. Well, it's Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, Seinfeld. It's, it's literally <laughs> Seinfeld. Jerry, George, Jerry, George, and Kramer. Wow. I, mean, I never thought of like that. You know, I never put Minnie's that. not the best Elaine. Though. My mind is blown. Oh no, no, she's had her moment. <laughs> is she? A, yeah, well, because she's the one that like she'll the she's the one that'll challenge them. You know, oh, yeah. mm. she's the one that li li will literally go get out. You know, and mm -mm. it's like oh, Minnie's well, pissed. She does, you know? yes. she does that to Mickey all the time. Yeah, inciting yeah. incident. Yeah, cool. So, Danny, your first animation memory: Lonesome Ghost, Pinocchio, both classics yeah what were you always um kind of inclined as an artist as well or is that something that you kind of developed over time no apparently i was drawing in my spinach i was oh, wow. from from day one my dad always my dad always 
he really likes to tell these tales like it's mm-hmm. uh, like it's a fable. And he goes like, well, you used to draw these faces in your spinach, and you even got the nostrils right. You wow. know, and I'm like, you know, because that's his way of saying like you you had an attention to detail even at a young age. How did you draw in spinach? You just like, like your finger, your finger, yeah. like, so like like wet, wet. Yeah, spinach. it's like I'm in the high chair, and there's yeah. just like yeah, because oh, like I baby mean, food spinach. Like kids, like you just yeah. Utensils go out the window with children. Like you literally go like, let's try a fork. Okay, let's Why? not. Let, yeah. Well, because it goes toward the eye, and then yeah. you go, you know what? Just use your fingers, and then sure. you know you start mushing it up and slapping it. And my daughter does what's called the windshield wiper, where uh-huh. she literally just starts wiping <laughs> oh, food no, all she's over the place. Oh no, she's after you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Except for yeah, yeah. No, she's, she's gonna be an engineer. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. when you see her playing with the spinach, you you don't even like tell her to stop. You're like, oh wait, no, she's onto something. Because I remember when I used to. No, no, no. I, I tell her to stop. I go, it's, 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 you're getting it all over my pants. Please stop it. Boo, boo won't eat that. We have a dog you named Boo. Yeah. I, I don't know how people can have a kid without a dog because the dog is literally like the Roomba for uh-huh. everything that the kid does. Nice. Like the kid will just spill food everywhere and suddenly you just like blink and it's gone and you're like, cool, awesome. I don't have to clean up the floor. Good job, Boo. Yeah, good job, Boo. There's just dog spit all over the floor but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's That's fine. fine. Yeah, no yeah. one cares about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's cleaner than human spit so. Oh, or so, right. or so I've heard. I don't know. So the science has yeah. been proven. Yeah. Uh, so before I, before I ask my next question that we usually ask, I just want to mention something that I forgot to mention at the beginning is that we are at Danner's house right now. We're at Matt Danner's house. He lets us come here into his um, toy box. his toy box. Yeah. This is his toy box. The home office slash toy box. Home office yeah. slash toy box. Every single time we've recorded, uh, you know, sounds like one time when we couldn't make it here. We have been in this toy box recording the studio. So first of all, thanks for letting us do that. Well, no problem. So much. This is an awesome space, and Appreciate it really. It. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can't really get rid of you, can I? You can try. <laughs> well, nah, why would I try? <laughs> it won't, it's too much effort. Yeah, people go nuts well, over all work. the toys. Yeah, they're everywhere. <laughs> I mean, have you guys filmed everything? Like, because you've seen uh, this all the time. I think yeah. we've taken footage, yeah. and then also we've taken pictures. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How did How did you start this collection? Well, some of this is from my childhood, believe it or not. Oh, like, yeah? the, there's stuff peppered in there. Some of them are toys I've made. Yeah, some of them got, are. Yeah, my pet monster. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's an that's an OG my pet monster yeah. before they uh, uh, altered the nose for uh, obvious reasons. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, there's uh, Too these, much like an avocado, these are these man. are uh, oh, this this is, these are all from my first film that I, I did with um, uh, a guy named Eric Pringle who you work oh, with. Yeah. Uh, this is called Pussy Cow. These are all um, <laughs> uh, we we made it. We were really obsessed with like how dream uh, dream pets were like super off model. From, yeah. Like, if they made a Yogi Bear dream pet, it would look like really, it'd be like red or something. <laughs> did you make those? Yeah, yeah. These are actually prototypes. We actually did a doll line um, oh, when God. we did our when we did our first film. It was when it was it was when we were doing Flash at 24 frames a second. Which is, and everyone said we were crazy. That's really important to know. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so we we actually um, we we worked with um, a guy named Ciro Neely, who uh, he was the EP on the new nin- or the just the last version of Ninja yeah, the Turtles. Mm-hmm. So we had a studio together and called Nebulous Films, and we made a bunch of stuff, and this was one of them. So we made a toy line. We sold them at Urban Outfitters. Uh, 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 yeah, it was a legit man. We were in Universal Studios. Yes. Quick, uh, quick industry. We sold. We sold legit. Stuff, yeah. Quick industry note translation: EP is executive producer. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> eep. Eep. The eep. Yeah. 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 So, so these there. are so this is where we tried real buttons, but we're like, ah, that doesn't look like goat eyes enough. So then we like made fake buttons, and this is actually what it ended up like. This is the final nice dream beast with the tag and everything. Pussy cow, huh? Yeah. Is pussy cow for children? No. Oh, okay, because yeah. it says has the word pussy. But it's also an yeah. LA reference. It is an like, LA reference because Danner's from Los Angeles as well. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so and so is Pringle. And Pringles. Yeah. There. And if you grew up in Los Angeles, you guys remember the go see cow commercials. Yeah. From the eighties and the nineties, I don't. Like go see cow, go, go see, see cow, cow, go see cow. cow. And he was he was the cowboy <laughs> car salesman that had like the chimpanzees oh, okay. and the giraffes and, a, and stuff. And a tiger and, and a tiger. Whatever. Yeah, and I think that trickled into the zeitgeist everywhere, not yeah. just yeah. LA, but yeah, I kind of have vague memory. But a lot of people thought he was saying pussy cow, pussy cow, pussy cow. Uh huh. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so we made a cartoon about it. Oh, nice. so mature. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I would say that was sort of my spumco thesis. Because I had Ooh, I had been work cow. yeah I had been my because my that was my first animation job. You know what that was gonna be one of the next questions. Oh okay, <laughs> there actually, you go. actually before, did I segue? Yeah. Oh my god, you're a pro. <laughs> before we get before we get into before we get sorry into, sorry sorry. Oh, oh oh it's totally fine. Before we get into you working at Spumco being one of your first animation gigs, um, I got a, one more question education. to squeeze in there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, education. But before that, actually. Um, 
When did you realize that animation was something that, instead of just loving it, loving to draw, loving to watch it, experience it, that it's something that you wanted to make money? Like, I know that sounds like a weird way to put it, but something you wanted to do professionally. Yeah. When did you make that decision? I, I, I wasn't quite sure at the time when I decided that money was even a thing, mm -hmm. you know, because this was like pre... I understood what jobs were. I mean, you knew what yeah. money was, but usually it was like allowance. So it's like, oh, I got to take out the garbage. But what do I like to do for real? It's like, you know, I like to draw. I like to do voices. I like to puppeteer. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I grew up watching Sesame Street, mm -hmm. you know, which is something I've been talking about a lot because Kermit was sort of one of my first like, you know, interactive shows, you know, because it's like when yeah. you watch Mickey Mouse and you watch all this stuff, every now and again, they talk to the camera. But when for people who grew up with the Muppets, it's like. Literally, they're just talking to you. You know, Breaking so the force for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, but like, but to the point where if you're young enough, you kind of buy it. You're like, yeah, hey man, Kermit's my buddy. He's my buddy. Like, he's my pal. <laughs> yeah. Um. And and so was and what I loved about Sesame Street is it was so mixed media that like there was like animation, there was stop motion, there was puppets, there was dancing, there was this, that, the other <laughs> thing. So I kind of feel like I I I um I liked all of it, and mm -hmm. I almost couldn't decide, but I knew that I could draw, and that's what my parents really focused on yeah. was m me being able to draw. And then my mom actually, my, my dad especially, because he was an artist at one point, um, uh, more abstract, but still he could, you know, when we would draw together, I would draw with him. But my mom was the one who was able to sort of, you know, um, hone my storytelling and my mm -hmm. characters and sort of mm -hmm. my acting. Um, and so, but I again, I didn't put the pieces together until probably like, I want to say like the... When did when did Ninja Turtles come out? Oh, the original. Yeah, uh, like eighty something. 88. So like right around there is when I started going like, huh, like this. I like the characters. I like that it's crazy drawings. I also like that it's a toy. Like it was like sort of all of these aspects that all kind of fed together into the same yeah. idea. And and then it wasn't until you know kind of I'd say the nineties when like nineties cartoons started really hitting. Sure, like, yeah. You know, like you know a Snick and like. You know, all those shows, Ren and Stimpy, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Rugrats, Doug. Um, the Cartoon Network you know, shows as well. The Cartoon Mid Network shows started coming around. Animaniacs. Well, yeah, Animaniacs. Animaniacs. When, when, um, when I went, oh, okay, well, this does everything I want to do. Mm -hmm. I can tell stories. I can draw. I can yeah. play characters. I can choreograph stuff. And I can cut to live action if I want. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah, And I can yeah, do puppets, sure. you know. Awesome, so sure. if Yeah, and, and it's funny because it's really, you know, if you look at, cartoons nowadays it's like they are really multimedia like that you know? yeah yeah for I sure mean, look at Spongebob or Chowder or exactly, something like that yeah. they always, they always oh, did something Adventure Time yeah. I mean, Adventure Time does uh, it sometimes yeah. you know uh, I was just I just saw an old episode of Flapjack the other day uh, which, Flapjack. which, they, which, yeah. which kind of came and went but it's such a good show and Thurup's such an awesome guy and yeah. like he's so funny um, and he's I, you know I, I saw him not not too long ago, but um uh but uh but even that show was like they went really weird on it where suddenly Wacky. they just cut to these weird like lips yeah. on like a weird sculpture of something <laughs> that yeah. was on green screen like with like a weird CG. Th it's well, like what, what's his face with his candy wife? Yeah, yeah, yeah candy yeah, wife yeah. was yeah. always live action. You know what I mean? But it, but yeah, it, it, but it was like it was like it was almost like ridiculously multimedia. And yeah. So I feel like that sort of you know. Gumball was mm. totally. Gum gum I mean gum I mean well gumball. That's the point. Yeah, that's literally the point. Yeah, there's the. There's the there's the icing. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of, it kind of all accumulated. It's like there it is. It's, it all came to gumball. Yeah, yeah, it's like sure. that's it. We're done. That's no more cartoons. <laughs> we don't, we don't <laughs> need to make anymore. No one I, can do that. Now. Yeah. I, I kind of feel that way. I'm like, oh, we'll never make a shit that good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. It is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so sure. anyway, so that's so. Long story short, too late. So like mid mid nineties, mid nineties is when you kind of realize. Or I'd like say early 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 late eighties, early nineties. So about about how is it rude to ask how old you were about that? No, no, I was. I, I was in kindergarten. I started kindergarten in 85, 86. Mm -hmm. oh so so I was probably in like second or third grade. Oh, by, you were pretty by the young 90s. when you realized yeah. that, huh? Yeah. Because a lot of people have told us they realized that they wanted to pursue animation as a career like when they were in late high school or like. No, college, no. I knew like, I knew when I was in elementary school. And I was, wow. the draw, I was a drawer. Like I would literally give drawing classes to kids artists. at school. To be fair, you had that unfair advantage because your mother took you to the studio very early on. You understood. It was completely career. unfair. Yeah. I'm a fraud. Yeah. Well, like most of us were kind of like, oh, a cartoon is like an entertainment medium. But yeah. we don't have to understand the process and, and it's, until and, a little later. And it's kind of funny because I actually tell this story a lot because – my immediate family, my mom and dad were very supportive. Yeah. When they knew, like, they, it's like, That's you still got to do your homework. You still got to, like, learn how to be a regular human being. But, like, if you want to be, you know, a crazy artist that does cartoons, we're okay with that, but just get good at it, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
Um, and my art teachers growing up were always very supportive. My other teachers hated me. I got kicked out of class all the time for drawing flip books in my, I love in my those textbooks. Stories. Oh, dude, yeah. I got kicked out of class That's like all the time. That's like the story of every, every freaking artist in school. Yeah. <laughs> and then, but what the cool thing was is that, of course, my dad went, Matthew. But then he went, good job. It was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. I like. What you I did like. There. I was doing like Where ninja go, fights son? and stuff. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Um, That's but, cool. But my extended family, you know, they might they uh, they're they're a lot more like you know lawyers and doctors and real estate people Retired. and like yeah. r- quote unquote real jobs. And yeah. that was actually what they said to me at first. And 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 I actually give them a lot of credit because they did not understand because I was I, I was suddenly doing cartoons. And I'm like <laughs> I'm going to be a cartoonist. And then they went, Well, what are you going to do for real? <laughs> and I'm like. I'm going to be a cartoonist. Like, what? Mm-hmm. I don't understand. You can be my lawyer. <laughs> However, I know, right? But, but to, to, to all their credit, you know, there was, there was, there was the time when, when I had gotten, when I was really working, I was in the union and I had just done a record with Tom Kenny, oh, aka yeah. Spongebob. Yes. And when I told them that, the story completely changed. They're like, you work with Spongebob? Yeah. Oh my God, wow. you get autograph? And I was like, mm-hmm. okay. And, and Tom, thankfully, is a friend of mine and I was able to go like, Hey Tom, you mind if I uh, uh, get a couple autographs for him? He's like, Oh yeah, sure, buddy, no problem. You know, and he wrote, you know, stay moist, love SpongeBob. Ah! You know, and he did that whole thing. <laughs> oh my God, you're good at that. And I was like, oh, Yeah, right. Uh, thank you. Um, but but um, but that that sort of that sort of changed it all. And then since yeah. then, my family's been very very supportive. So now I know how to convince others too. Use SpongeBob. Oh yeah, yeah. Andy, just get Use Tom the Kenny. SpongeBob dude. Just call him up. He like shows up at your house. He's, he's a chill like, dude, man. Okay, yeah, who do I gotta really convince? Cool. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, he's really a cool. he's a really cool dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we all have cool a, Everyone has a Tom Kenny story. Oh yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. Met or, like, I do. <laughs> accidentally, accidentally hung out with Tom yeah. Kenny at some point. He's like the Ferris Bueller of like yeah. cartoon voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's everywhere. Save Tom Kenny. I know. Seriously. So I have a question. Leading up to your later adulting life uh what kind of type of education whether it was in high school or middle school or whatever or college like yeah. did you do where, what kind of things did you do to work towards art i can tell you right away not much like right away it was like i got the art classes that i got you yeah. know and i took and i try and, you know and of course you know you you try to find like kid art classes that will support that and again like you know i was encouraged but at the same time like i only wanted to do one thing yeah. Like I didn't want to do collages and stuff. I wanted to draw cartoon characters. Yeah. yeah. I wanted yeah. to draw characters. I wanted in like painting class. It's like, I was like, I was like, well, how do I do outlines? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, cause yeah. you know, they're like, well, but you gotta paint the shapes. And I'm like, no, I want to draw an outline. So I would basically <laughs> just do like cell paintings on canvas. You know, and my teacher was like, I don't understand this. Um, it's great. art. <laughs> it's a Simpsons bag. Yeah. But I will say this. So, so when I got focused is when I, I heard about a high school called uh, LOXA, which is the uh, Los Angeles oh. County High School for the Arts. And it's a, awesome. And it's a great school. I heard. Um, and uh, it's a magnet, so it's free, but you have to audition to get in. But they're very, very, like, classic there. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean audition? How, what, do you, what do you have to do? It's like, kind of like you do have to draw... I had to bring a portfolio. Yeah. Okay. I had to have a portfolio. Okay. And not just, like... At age... A, at age. At a, this was, this was, this was a, when I was school, trying out for 10th right? grade. Wow. So yeah. like, you know, portfolio, portfolio, yeah. 10th grade. That's intense. Yeah. Um, and, um, and so, uh, but what was cool is, is that, you know, uh, again, I'm in LA, so there's lots of schools everywhere. So there was a, a, a project, a, a, a program at, um, art center called Saturday high. Yeah. Which I completely recommend. Actually art center is like a really hard ass school on their, on their artists, but I'm telling you, they're good, and the, and the people that come people. out of there are like it's like boot camp. Oh, I oh always tell God, people yeah. the best two schools out here are Art Center and um, Cal Arts for their own different reasons. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But Art Center is my personal favorite. Well, I wish I went there. I well, and, and well, but you you can because they have Saturday <laughs> High where you can just pay a little money and get taught by their teachers. That's awesome. So that's what I did, and so I spent uh, basically a, a, a half a school year in a summer doing figure drawing. I learned watercolor. You know, I just learned like stuff that fit because the cool thing about that about art center is that they were able to look at what i like to do yeah and go well if you want to be an animator you got to know how to figure draw mm. if you want to if you like animation style out of painting watercolor is probably more in your zone because that's more ink and you know yeah, so they were really good at sort of diagnosing me at a really young age Interesting. Oh, wow. and then i was able to put together a portfolio that got me into loxa okay okay and then at loxa i learned like how to do cg oh, i learned what? tons of shit yeah it was awesome it was oh, it was man. super cool so you got um, to go for 10th grade, Loxa. 10th, 11th, and 12th. Yeah. Oh, nice, and, dude. Uh, and uh, it was funny because, uh, and this is my, this is my, uh, this is my, uh, my, my 80s, like, you know, hero story. Is mm-hmm. like, you know, I was a, 
up until this point, I was a nerd. I was like an outcast. Nobody understood me. I graduated Laksa's class president. You know wow. what I mean? Like, I and, and no, and it was awesome. And it was like, it was, it was like cool being around my people and being encouraged by teachers and in high school too, especially. And it was groovy and they were college level courses. So it's like, we would do, you know, we would do, you know, academics until lunch. And then the rest of the day was our classes. That's until awesome. Four. It was cool. Wow. Damn it. Yeah, that's a really great yeah. experience. Yeah. It's intense. It's the first time I'm hearing of Loxa. Yeah. And, I was and recommended the, to go and there and once. Also the, yeah. oh yeah. yeah it's cool. And then I was just too scared to try I'll, it I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you, I'll do two name drops. You ready? Go yeah. for it. I went to high school with Josh Groban, the famous opera star and, uh, Taryn Killam. Who's oh, just recently SML. on SNL? And yeah. Was it uh, multiple yeah. types of art? Like it was. Yeah, no, it's, it's, art, right? it's visual, theater, yeah, uh, music and dance. Okay. Yeah. Oh man. No, it's rad. Yeah. And you can cross over because, like, one of the things I did is I did um, I did acting and art. That's so, so cool. I was able to do oh, like, and that kind of helps towards your voice acting. It's right? all full circle, oh, man. Snap. Yeah. Yeah. Bada boom. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I did like TV studio where they actually like they had a three camera system and we actually got to run like a TV studio. And, like, be director and, and, and film. Yeah, yeah. I, I never got to take a turn. In high school. And, it was rad. I would have really loved neat. high school more. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I know, right? I hated <laughs> right, it yeah. until then. Isn't it amazing when you let like kids figure out the things they want to do and just let them do and it that they're more passionate yeah. about? It? Yeah. Why is that so amazing? Yeah, yeah. That, that's what they should keep. That's what they should do. Yeah. Like in academics, to be honest. Well, they yeah, should they should every... do that in this country. They do that in other countries. Really? But they should, yeah. Oh, I hate but, America. <laughs> but I do want to. I do want to stress, though. I do want to stress. It. It was a lot of hard work. Mm. And of like as much as and again, I believe me. And like you know, I take all of these opportunities that I've been granted. I'm. I'm extremely, extremely th- thankful that I was lucky enough to be there, mm-hmm. um, because they say 99 percent of luck is showing up. Mm-hmm. So it's like oh, yeah. that's that's half the battle, but but the but every step took work. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't like oh I just showed up at Loxa and they accepted me. It's like yeah. I spent like a year and a half of like heavy 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 like it was intense art classes just to get good enough to be like considered. Well, yeah. I bet also so. the homework too was like oh yeah it's well it's like yeah like you I mean and then you had five you had, yeah. you had five different art classes a week and each of those art classes had like you know. Design, <laughs> yeah, design a uh, design a brand for a, a a toy store with bags and logos and stickers and all that kind of stuff. That's one class, and then there's your fine art class, which is t- paint a tree, yeah, mm-hmm. which is harder than oh you think. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's <laughs> you know, college courses. Yeah, they were like college courses, oh but God. all on top of each other. So it was pretty groovy. That's pretty intense, man. Yeah. So I, I don't know if we have any like super young viewers that are not yet in high school, but we might. We very well might. Yeah. And if we do, then if you're in the Los Angeles area, just cover your ears hey, every single time you hear a cuss word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah, they know. <laughs> they know it. But yeah. Have, try having kids. Lo- you learn real quick to not do them anymore. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. like, I go like, ah, screw it. And I go, oop, oop, no, 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 please don't. <laughs> you know. Ah, screw it, daddy. Yeah, no, 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 I'm gonna start saying, no. oh, fudge. Yeah. yeah, I can't censor myself. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so, so Danner, after um, after Loxa, yeah, um, did you go to? Did you do the traditional route and go to college? Well, no, I was going to. Okay, but so the summer of my eleventh grade year, um, my uh, my mom, God bless her again, was like, because my summers were basically video games. You know what I mean? It's like it's I like, oh it. cool, Final Fantasy's out. I yeah, those days. you know, Which oh one? cool. Yeah, se- well, seven, <laughs> seven was yes! yeah, seven was when we were uh, Chrono yeah. Trigger. You know what I mean? Like no, I, I, I got all twenty endings one summer. I was like, wow. I did it. You know, I, I don't, I, I don't know if it was all twenty. I did that every summer. Too. It was pretty close. That's RPGs. Yeah, yeah, I know RPGs, and like my folks were kind of okay with it because they're like, well, at least he's reading. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of text. And the yeah, stories in those and games good. were not, there were no joke. Mm-hmm. They were intense comprehension. Mm-hmm. Good <laughs> character stuff. Good character. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Uh, so, but, but, um, but if it wasn't that, then I'd be helping my mom out in her office. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and, and that was like, you know, doing photocopies or answering the phone or okay. going on coffee runs or whatever. Um, so, but then 11th grade comes around, my summer of my 11th grade year, and she goes, get a job. You gotta oh, get a job. Oh, I'm not no. doing it again this year. Yeah, and I was like, okay. So of course, instead of like you know, I think what she was expecting for me was to like you know, you know, apply at like Ralph's or you know like 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 a, like a summer job. Like an actual, yeah. I went ahead and I, oh. I put together a portfolio oh. and I went straight to Spumco. Wow. I, wow. I, tra- I tracked them down online. So and I was senior like, in high school, you were Spumco. I wasn't a senior yet. Okay. I was just I just graduated eleventh grade. Wow. It was that summer, and so I said, all right, I'm gonna put a portfolio together with everything that I'd made that year. Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I tracked down Spumco, I 
I called them and I said, hey, I want to drop off my portfolio. They said, okay, come on in. Mm-hmm. Um, I went there and um, I met a guy named Steve Worth, who I don't mm-hmm. know if any, anybody who's in animation, yeah. like a CIFA, that kind of stuff knows who Steve Worth is, but he's a really fun guy. He's worth a, he, it. He, hey. Yeah, he's worth <laughs> it. And he went... He literally, I, I met him and he was like, hiya. And he's like just this cartoony guy with big suspenders and, you know, a fire truck red shirt with like patterns all over it and stuff. Mm. And uh, I just went like, here's my portfolio. And he goes, thanks. We'll look at it. <laughs> you know, and then I went home. Uh, but then I got a call two days later. I went in and they said, well, and, and, and then and then my mom at the time was like, take whatever they offer you. Like, just just take it. Yeah. So he said, we'll offer you an internship. I said, okay. That's good. Yeah. So, you know, I'm 16. Yeah. And uh, I didn't have my driver's license yet because, uh, well, I failed it too many times. That's fine. I didn't even get mine at 20, at the age of 21. I'm a, uh, yeah, I'm a great driver now. I swear. (laughs) I'm a really good driver now. But, um, but, uh, yeah, so I took it and it was supposed to be one day a week. Yep. Um, and so, so day, day one comes and they put me in a room with all the other interns who are all like college kids. Yeah. From like you know, Cal Arts and Art Center or whatever. And they're all just sitting there. It was like, like it was, it was, it felt like breakfast club, you know, where they're like, well, here's your room. And then they close the door and I'm here with all these kids that are just sitting around (laughs) and like the phone rings. It's part of the test. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. The phone rings and like nobody does anything. Yeah. And then I went, I went, Spumco, how can I help you? Uh And then they went, oh, can I, can you connect me to Kevin Colden? I went, oh uh, yeah, just one second. Click. I put on hold. I knew how to use the phone. Nice. Impressive. So then like, I didn't know how to, I didn't know whose extension was what. So then I walked out and then I went, Kevin? And went, I heard, yeah. And Kevin Caldy is, um, he's a Frederator now. He's, mm-hmm. okay. he's a producer for them. And he goes, yeah, what? And I go, that's his voice. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, you have a call on line two, I think. And he goes, oh, thanks. <laughs> and then that was that. And then I go back in the thing. Damn. And then it was like, you. and then somebody comes in and goes, can someone do photocopies? And I was, and like all the kids looked at each other and I was just like, yeah, because you helped and your mom. I, and I ran the, yeah, and I knew how to do it. Yeah, I knew how yeah. to change toner. I knew how to fucking fix a jam. I knew how to like you know. I knew how to f- do office Damn, stuff. Damn, sixteen year old. After one day, they're like, Kev, uh, <laughs> or uh, Steve comes by and he goes like, "Oh, pretty good first day. You can come by a little more often if you want." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Cool." So suddenly wow. I'm there five days a week. Wow, you know? impressive. <gasps> and for the people who don't know, Spumco is 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 John Chris Felucci's uh, yeah, you know, animation. The, it's the Ren and Stimpy. Ren and Stimpy guy. Oh, yeah, okay, Ren and Stimpy guy. That. Yeah. For sure, yeah. That that is Spumco. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> boom, right, boom. So you ended up being a five day a week intern and not getting paid any of the days. Not getting what? paid. Not getting paid. Hey man. However, you do what you do. however, yeah. Um, uh, tragedy struck. Oh no. And, a, de- and a deadline was needed. Yeah. And they needed someone to work the camera. What? Because at the time, deadlines and tragedies at Spumco. I've never heard of it. In oh animation, God. period, in production. No, I know. Yeah. No, it happened more often than not. But uh, no, it was great. Uh, but uh, but we were still we were still shooting stuff like with with cameras like this was not even yeah. we weren't scanning yet like this was like mm. on the cusp of that this is circa nineteen ninety eight this is nineteen ninety seven seven okay so so um, so you know Flash was starting to be a thing yep and Photoshop and all like, I, think it was, I think I think it was show? I think it was the yep that was that, that's that's that was where that's where it started mm-hmm. um, but we were still we were still literally like scanning in painted backgrounds I mean the first thing I worked wow. on was a Cadbury's commercial with cells mm-hmm. so I was photographing cells I was looking at X sheets and I was like timing it out and lighting yeah, the yeah. scene and doing all that kind of stuff Impressive. did you say Cadbury? Cadbury yeah Cadbury the, the, the Cadbury the, the candy company the appropriate for Easter. yeah oh it, was, it was a, it was a um, it was a commercial that um, uh, actually uh, Aaron Springer had done a lot of oh like, like, like yeah. animation yeah. Yeah. Do you worked on my favorite Kogoth, chocolate the barbaric Cor- yeah Cor- Aaron Springer and more yeah uh, he's on the Mickey Shorts, you mm-hmm. know. He's, yeah, for he's, sure. He's a he's a he's a fun guy. He did um, and now he he was he was actually already he had already moved on to I think Cartoon Network at the time when I was there. So our paths mm-hmm. didn't cross there, but I was I was like you know basically photographing his drawings, pencil tests, making sure everything was right. And yeah. Everything. So uh, so then you know again I'll 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 fast forward a little bit, but so then again they needed somebody to do inks. So I was like, I'll do that, you know, and then I got, and then, you know, I, at first they just had me inking effects, you know, which was like, you know, splatters and stuff. But yeah. then my hand was steady enough, so they started giving me characters. And then eventually um, I was doing in-betweens. Uh, oh. And then it sort of just worked out that by the end of the summer, they just offered me an after-school gig. Wow. And they and they said, we'll pay you. And I was Whoa. like, what? So you were Because I, I was going to go back to school. Yeah. 
I was like, well, summer's over, everybody. Goodbye. And they're like, no, no, no. Like, if you want to keep coming by after school, like, that, that's okay. And, yeah. And when we'll pay you. And they paid me, like, it was like eight fifty an hour or something like that. It was like... At the time, it was probably like right around minimum wage. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know what minimum it's wage is. Eight fifty an hour and cool. yeah, in 1997. <laughs> okay. well, that's pretty like, good, right? Yeah. Dude, but yeah, but again, I was, I, I was working hour. like yeah. I was working like two to four hours after school every day. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But 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 that's what I did. So it was I part time for sure. It was totally part time. But I went to school, and then and then it was great though because then once my teachers found out that yeah. I was already working in animation, they stopped giving me so much homework. Ah, wow. good teachers. Like the art teachers, because yeah. they were like, ah, oh, well. I understand you. You get this, but like yeah. you know, bring in some of your animation. The next thing that you do. So I was bringing wow. in like old Navy commercials or whatever, whatever thing I could go. Look, I did that and that and that. I didn't know Spumco did so many commercials. Uh, yeah, I mean commercials, music videos. Yeah, um, I knew they did. I knew that a lot of their music videos. Yeah, we yeah. did a lot of like Tenacious D stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, sweet. Um, and the Bjork and the Weird Al. Bjork and Weird Al and. Really? Weird Al and yeah. Um, yeah, and, and, and uh, the first, but the first credit screen credit that I ever got yeah. was on the. Um, was on uh, the Boo Boo Runs Wild, uh, the Yogi Bear short. Oh, wow. That classic. Yeah. yeah. What, year, cool. what year was that made? 98, 98. Yeah, yeah. That was like in 98? Yeah. Oh, wow. I've never seen that. Cartoon. It was a while ago. Yeah, because yeah. I remember watching that on Adult Swim like in the mid-2000s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they aired, so, it, yeah. they aired it around then. Yeah. It's still an SD. Yeah. <laughs> That's how old it is. Wow. Yeah. I did not know it was so old. That's, That's pretty impressive. And then that was that. So, uh, so uh, longer story short, uh, I I applied for I graduated. Uh, Spumco said, "Hey, oh, oh, here's what happened. I applied I applied for college, um, and I was going to go to Pratt Art Institute yeah. in New York, um, and they were going to give me a free ride. They were like, hey, like we you're working, we like you here, you know, like fill mm-hmm. out your stuff, and you know, we'll make it happen. And then, but then, but then Spumco turned around and said, do you want a full time job? Mm-hmm. And I was like, sure. I mean, I was like, I'll take a year." Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's been twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so wait, did so college was never I, I didn't I didn't go. Yeah. I admire the you workforce. so much. Oh well Don't you? Ev- no no, everyone's yeah. path is different. No, everyone's I know, I know. That's what this that's what this podcast is, yeah, is to see how different. different yeah. yeah. And again again, you know, to be fair, all of the all of the art training that I've had up to that point was college level art training. Yeah. Yeah, from art yeah. center and from LOXA. So like yeah. Again, it wasn't it wasn't as if I never had any training, but yeah. but getting on the job training is like invaluable. Yeah, yeah. So indeed. I think indeed. you said on the podcast, as long as you can do the work, you can get the job. Yeah, but you have to be able to do the work, and that's For sure. what you gotta prove. Yeah, I just like I, I like people to know that there's some people who don't go to college to get into the industry, like they just get in and then they never go to college. Because I don't know, I feel like a lot of people feel like they have to go to college in order to get into this industry, and they have to get a degree. And out here, like, especially as of late, it's just so expensive. And yeah. if, like, if you're passionate enough and you can land in, like, with your skills in yeah. any other way, like, especially some people, like, get a job during college, mm-hmm. and then they're, like, they'll, like, they'll turn it down just so they can finish just to get their degree, but they're going to end up, like, they're not going to end up teaching anyway, so it's just, like, why just get that job because then you're just going to end up staying in the industry once you get that first job, you know? Ideally. That's often what happens. Yeah, if you yeah. want to do it, yeah, that yeah. would be ideal. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, and that's, and that's again, that's their that's their choice, yeah. that's their path, you yeah. know? Because yeah, sure. some people do take the job, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, I would just say this, it's like what, what, what I think college does for some people is that it, 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 it shows them the door mm-hmm. and it at least gives them something of what they need in order to achieve the next step, yeah, I you know? I definitely need and that, college. And that's the thing, and like, but I mean, I did too. Like, I I went to art school, you yeah. know. Like, I didn't go to art college, but I you just did I basically did, you yeah, know? yeah. Sure. So it's like you need you you do need that sort of like you know invitation almost. You know, yeah. you, need, you need to you need you need your brain to be able to go. Oh, I, this is I I understand how to process this now, and yeah. this is how I'm going to pursue it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Do you yes. ever um do you ever like do you ever regret not going to college, or you're just 100 percent happy with? No, your I mean, of course I did. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, who doesn't for the college well, experience? Well, no, but who doesn't look at their <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to be in a fraternity. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you want to be in a fraternity. Like, I just I, isn't that what we're doing tonight? You have goldfish. I heard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna swallow some goldfish. Oh, is that <laughs> is that related to? Oh. <laughs> Isn't that what you do? I don't know. Yeah, it's a fraternity. It's yeah. like an old trope. Yeah. Do they, apparently, like, do apparently, they sniff goldfish yeah. or something? Do they no, snort they, it? No, they swallow no, no, a like goldfish. a real goldfish. They would swallow a live goldfish. 
Yeah, because are you serious? That was like an old fraternity. That was like a nineteen fifties. Oh, I didn't even know no, this. That was your joke. That was my oh. joke. She, oh, that was your joke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe, 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 that was a great yeah. joke. Yeah. I'm still gonna give you credit. I like <laughs> snorting better. That's your joke. You wrote it first. Yeah. yeah. No. I mean, do you want to snort a line of goldfish? No, 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 no. <laughs> I no, heard but, it's great. But I, I don't want to get deep. But I will say, but who doesn't say what if? Yeah. What I if? I mean, sure. come on. Like every single human being on this planet goes, well, what if I didn't do that constantly, one thing? You know. Constantly, yeah. So yes, for a while that was what it was. But I will say, if you if you can at least look at things in a forward thinking way, where you go, look, you did what you did. You, 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 you're here where you're at and yeah. now yeah. what? Be present. Um, I mean, uh, you know, assuming you didn't murder somebody along the way, which I hope yeah, well, nobody in this room did, you know, that, that, that's bad. Then, then, there was then, that one then time. you should start questioning your past, you know, but yeah. in terms of like, should I have not taken that opportunity or did I mean like, you know, you just have to kind of move forward, mm-hmm. you know, what happened, happened. Yeah. Uh, look at the situation, analyze it and move forward. Yeah. And move forward. Yeah, and if exactly. you're happy and if you can find happiness where you're at, then I think that's a good thing. You know? For sure. And it seems like you fucking did relatively well for I'm, yourself. I'm happy. You know? I'm happy. You know, there's always more to do. I, <laughs> yeah, of course. Always, there's always more I want to do. But yeah. yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. Cool. You know, I got a kid. I got a beautiful daughter and a beautiful wife. And, a, and you guys are recording in my house. We are. I have a house. Like, this that's like, kind of cool. This is, this is a building right? adjacent to your house that's, that you yeah, also that's own. That's true. I have a, yeah, I, also I have a studio. Building. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. That's great, man. So, okay. So, this is usually where we kind of transition into what... Um, the downtime between like either a high school or college and getting your first job in the industry. And we usually talk about the apprehension and the nervousness and, and, and how much you're doubting yourself. But at this, it doesn't seem I, like I got a, that. no, no, I got a great story for you. Okay. okay. Oh, so, so you actually yes. did go through that. I have a, I have, I have a fantastic story to oh, illustrate let's... that exact point. Let's hear it. Okay. So I'm at Spumco, right? Yeah. <laughs> I get a call saying, Hey, Powerpuff Girls is hired. <gasps> I go, I love really? that show. Really? Yeah. yeah. Doesn't everybody? <laughs> um, well, I mean, I was a kid when I watched that show. <laughs> yeah, so, well, so was I. Uh, you know, because, I mean, I was in high school. That, yeah, for sure. That, that's a kid. I was younger. So, so here's what I did. So uh, I actually put together a portfolio. I, I redid my whole portfolio because yeah. like, I because I didn't want to go in with Spomco stuff. Yeah. I wanted to go in with, which is the more like, you know, the more clampity. Um, for, for those of you who don't know who Bob Clampett is, he's the Bugs Bunny guy from back in the day. Yeah, and he yeah. drew, uh, uh, John, uh, and the Spumco kind of style draws a lot of, uh, um, clampity, uh, clampity <laughs> inspiration from that. So I, but I went, I went for, I started studying like UPA stuff and I started studying more of the graphic stuff. Sure. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to nail this. So I put together a portfolio. I get an interview with Gendy Tartakovsky. <gasps> wow. Who looks at my portfolio and he goes, yeah, you're pretty good. I'll give you a test. Mm. He goes, turn it in in two weeks. Yeah. I go, okay. I did the test. I did a whole storyboard test. And I thought it was really, really, really cool. Yeah. Then it gets down to, all right, now I'm going to take it in. And I did it. You didn't, wait, you didn't. I didn't turn it in. Turn it in. Why? I was, I was too, I was too afraid. What? No, no, no. Wow. You asked for it. Yeah. I was too afraid. So you, like, were, you were nervous about getting, what getting I was just, I was just so nervous because I was like, well, <laughs> I almost said to myself, if I don't try, I can't fail. Oh, wow. Jesus. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 I know. Yeah. This is why this is important. This is yeah. important. And I'm, you know, at the time I'm, I'm like 19, yeah. you know, so I'm still, you know, like, again, I mean, I'm not saying that people when they're 19 aren't woke, but like, I certainly wasn't, you know, <laughs> but, but I was too, I was too afraid and I didn't yeah. do it. And I didn't turn it in ever. And but so, I already had a job, so I was like, "Well, I already have a yeah. job, and I'm going to stick with this and whatever." Do you think it was maybe you were in your comfort zone at Spumco and you didn't want to like jump out of that? Maybe, but I also think you know maybe I didn't think I was ready yet, or okay. I, I mean I don't know. I can't. I, like that's that's the problem with that voice. Yeah. Like that voice doesn't come from anywhere. That voice is just what everybody has. Yeah. Which is that voice that says, you know, everything you do isn't good enough. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. that's being an that's artist. Everyone, come yeah. on, we all know. That. We all know that. So, that being said, so years later, Mm -hmm. years later, I end up, uh, uh, thanks to Eric Pringle, Mm -hmm. uh, doing a hand-drawn animation for Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, which is Craig McCracken's show. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Also the creator of Power of Growth. So, I actually met him in person. And he was like, dude, your animation's rad. And I did all these, like, slow motion scenes. Yeah. Because it was a flash animated show. 
where you do need a certain amount of hand drawn stuff, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of things you can do digitally yeah, to manipulate the, the characters. Yeah. But they needed like slow mo slam. It was this whole basketball thing, yeah, and they needed yeah. all these slow motion slam dunks and camera turnarounds and all this stuff. So I hand drew all that stuff to the point where they uh, at one point Eric Pringle's office was completely wallpapered with all the drawings that I had done. <laughs> oh, that's for, awesome. Um, and it was an awesome experience. And Craig McCracken was like, "Dude, you're awesome. Thank you so much." And and I was like, "Oh, wow." Cool, thank I you. I am good yeah. enough. And no, so check it out. So I actually told him the story yeah. about how I did the tests and how I did the thing. And so I brought the board in yeah. and I showed it to him and he pages through it and he goes, Oh, you would have totally gotten the job. Oh my wow. god. Wow. Wow. And that was like seven years later. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Wow, like, you still had your test seven I, years I later. I think it's in that drawer over there, actually. Oh my god. I think I hold on to it as a reminder of yeah. like to not to not limit yourself. Yes, you know? that is important. That's why I wanted to tell that story, because seriously, even when you're in the game, yeah. you can still tell yourself that you're not good enough, and you just, you just don't listen to that. Like, yeah. like, if you don't feel like you're not good enough, then do whatever you can to trick, or not trick yourself, to prove to yourself yeah. that you are good enough. And sometimes that's just getting the knowledge, mm -hmm. reading a book, I mean, like, talking to someone else who's an expert to give you advice. Yeah, that's there's, always a good one. There's, there's a million ways to judo your brain around that self-doubt, <laughs> and yeah. you gotta do it, because yeah. otherwise you will never do anything. Um, but, that being said, do I regret it? At this point, no. Yeah. At the time, absolutely yeah. Sure. yeah yeah oh my sure. god i bet you know so <laughs> yeah that's great man yeah. so we got we got to like clip that out and like make it its own video because yeah. that's a great story that's i great have story. never told that story publicly yet oh, yeah? i've told oh. it to friends but never on any sort of broadcast you, so you guys are the first that's yeah. the exclusive yeah. story Special. I mean, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm honored <laughs> but anyway. that's awesome man well yeah. okay let's see what are we usually going to next um what are like i mean from transitions to each job and then mm -hmm. like what are all the other jobs that you've had in for sure i feel like yeah you, like i said earlier you have a, yeah, a, ri a rich tapestry yeah, of, yeah. big career Mm -hmm. I'll give you the fast version. Yeah, let's so, do some. Let's do so, a fast so, version here. So from Spumco went to Nebulous Films just to like you know because the web the web the web mm -hmm. industry crashed right so so um, all the web cartoons and stuff we were doing at Spumco mm -hmm. went away so I went to work with Nebulous and they still had a few gigs mm -hmm. and uh, worked with Pringle and Tony Mora mm -hmm. Jerry De Jesus you oh, know yeah, Jerry. Yeah. Um, uh, Ciro of course um, and um, uh, from there uh, did Pussy Cow. Which was basically, basically we got to a point where the web industry disappeared and mm -hmm. we were all like, okay, we don't have jobs now. What do we do? Mm -hmm. And our idea was let's just make stuff, whatever it is. Let's just make stuff quickly yeah. and like just show the world that we can make stuff. And so we built this awesome website. Uh, we developed a show called Super Robot Monkey Team. Yeah. At the time it was called Ultra Force Go, but it, they turned it to Hyper Force Go, which was on Disney. Uh, Jetix? Or something? I think it was, it was on Disney. Uh, on the Disney. No, you're right. Was, yeah, it was probably Jetix, Jetix at the time. Yeah. Um, Jetix, that yeah. and then we did Pussy Cow and we did some other stuff. And then from there it just kind of took off. Where mm -hmm. like then then studios started kind of tapping us for flash work for television because hmm. that wasn't really a model yet yeah not yet it was like a, the first of its kind so then they, they basically absorbed our whole studio to work at Warner Brothers on a show called Mucha Lucha yeah I remember, oh, I remember Lucha Lucha. that which yeah. was a which was the the very first flash animated show ever huh. so we did that and then out of that came a, a pilots program where they needed more people to do they needed pilots like quickly and they mm -hmm. wanted and they realized that they did them in flash with the team that they had they could pump them out faster yeah. and we'd get more green lights and we'd get more jobs going for sure and that that happened and then we did something called the cartoon monsoon and basically me and pringle were running the whole thing with a guy named aaron simpson yeah um who's aaron cold hard flash sure, and yeah. you know he's you know uh, he's 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 everywhere he's, a, he's he's great um i just talked to him the other day and he's still he's still doing very well um, and, uh, so, uh, we just started pumping out pilots and, um, one of those was Shaolin Showdown mm. and at a Shaolin Showdown, I actually then, but that eventually became a, a traditional show, but mm. I, I, you know, they, I wasn't, I wasn't ready to be a director on that. Yeah. However, I directed a bunch of other stuff for Warners for that. I did not. I, yeah. for there I was just, you know, they produced it in flash. Um, so I, I auditioned to be the art director for the show and I got okay. the gig. Nice. So it was the first show where I was like, now I'm the art director. And then I got to meet Eric Radomski, mm -hmm. uh, who, um, you know, animated yeah, Batman animated series, wow. Freakazoid, mm -hmm. you know, he, uh, he's, he's, he's running Marvel animation. Yeah. Wait, what did he do on Batman and Freakazoid? He, he was, was the, the art director. He was the art director. Art director. Animated yeah. Animated yeah. And I think on Freakazoid, he was producer. Yes. Producer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Um, cool. and then on this show on Shaolin, he was the EP mm -hmm. and then he hired me as a, as, as the art director. And then I, and then I worked with him and we art directed the whole show, uh, with, um, uh, with John Calmette, who is the background art director. That's right. I did all character art direction, and John Calmette did all background stuff. Hmm. 
And then by season two, I was directing episodes. So now I'm a TV director. Wow. Like officially. Nice. Um, and then it sort of took off from there. And then I'll give you the short version, but I jumped around. You know, I worked at Cartoon Network again, which is when I ran into Craig McCracken again. Mm-hmm. Uh, eventually worked at Adult Swim again with uh, Mike Lazo uh, and did uh, Drinky Crow Show with Tony oh, Millionaire. Yeah, sure. I remember Drinky Eric Crow Kaplan. Show. And Crow. yeah, there's, there there's some tricky right crows there. in there. Yeah, there's, yeah, you have a lot of your stuff. You work yeah, with. see, oh, it's, I told you, it's all and it's all, all peppered in there. <laughs> um, I uh, uh, eventually went back to Warner Brothers and did Looney Tunes show. Mm-hmm. Uh, the oh, the Looney Tunes show. The Looney Tunes yeah, show. Yeah, show. Sure. Um, yeah. uh, mostly, I mean, I I, I, wor- I worked on the development. That's that's what I that's what I skipped. Is like I got to a point in my career where sort of like I would be brought in on development. Yeah. And then I'd help develop shows, and then eventually work on the show that I got on television okay cool. or or if it was the show that i wanted to go forward with so looney tune show is an example where they brought me in to develop it to develop it yeah. uh we got uh we actually our pilot was very similar to um wabbit believe yeah. it or not mm-hmm. uh, which was him like in the woods you know popping out of the hole and then yeah. going into the city like dynamiting on the yeah. yeah and then over over the course of time it kind of turned into a sitcom but yeah anyway um but i um but i was i i, I stayed more involved with sort of the music videos and the um the Wiley Coyote stuff. Oh yeah, I remember the music videos. And, the, and we were doing CG Wiley Coyote shorts, which mm-hmm. hadn't been done I before. I remember those. Yeah. And then we actually transitioned into doing more uh, theatrical ones, which were done by I can't remember his name. Uh, his name is Matt too. Matt o- Matt Matt O'Hulahan. Uh huh. I believe. Yeah, I remember seeing a I'm Wiley wrong, Coyote short in a theater. Yeah, and that, that and yeah. that yeah, and so and so um so that was sort of an offshoot of that whole version okay. of Warner Brothers. Cool. cool. Uh, then went over to Film Roman for a while, and the Hub, you know, and the Hub was. What you work on in Film Roman? I, I I did I developed and um, produced Dan Versus. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, produced and directed Dan Versus. Oh, and sure nice. ran that for a while, um, and then went over to Disney. Did a ton of development there. Worked mm-hmm. on stuff like Gravity Falls. Oh, one over you yonder. worked on Gravity Falls. I did. Yeah, I worked on Gravity Falls. Wow. Oh. Um, I uh, the I mean the pilot was being done when I got there. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, and what'd you do on Wander Over Yonder? Uh, I did boards on Wander Over Yonder. Oh, okay. I, did, I boarded an episode, you know, and uh, and then again I got to work with Greg McCracken again. Yeah. yeah. Um, I worked on the Mickey shorts, you know. Okay. I was I was in the initial development with those where we were pitching to like you know John Lasseter mm-hmm. with Aaron, um, with Aaron Springer, yeah, and Springer, and, yeah. and Dave Wasson and uh, Paul Rudish, who's yeah, like Paul Rudish. Paul Rudish is the There's guy. So many names. Um, and then uh, and then did that for a little bit, and then um, eventually um, I was going to go into series over there, but. Um, I got a, an offer to do some movies over at Mattel. Okay. Um, and so I did. Uh, I I did a Hot Wheels movie. Oh, cool. Which is around right here somewhere. Yeah, there's some. Hot, those she are the cars. Have a resume in here. I know. That's what I mean. I told you. It's a, <laughs> Just this point. is the, this is the collection of everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we did one movie, and it did so well that we did two more. Nice. Um, I worked right. on a bunch of WWE shorts, mm-hmm. these stop motion shorts. Worked with Stupid Buddy on those. Oh, cool. Oh, I saw um, worked on yeah, WWE. yeah, yeah. And I did, did Stupid Buddy and some of that stuff. Yeah. And, and they're great. I mean, yeah. they're, I mean, they're those guys. Like they got stop motion down to a science Brian for sure. Because yeah. it's tough. Yeah. Was he on that? Uh, not when I was there. Oh. Okay. But he was on Camp WWE. I think. Oh, okay. There you yeah, go. Yeah. This is this is this was like a toy line about these stretchy toys where they would like it was it was, it was sort of like, oh, okay. like One Piece or something where it's yeah. like you know they'd go like stretch and then they'd stretch and instead oh. of doing a wrestling move because that was what the toys did. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they were like, they're really funny. Wasn't that a toy? Was that based on that toy like? From like I don't know. Not Stretch Armstrong. Oh, okay, you guys know what I'm talking yeah, 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 about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't even know so what I'm right talking now, about. You, you're not. You know what? You're not wrong though. It's in that. It's in that family. It's okay. Vein, it's in the okay. vein of Stretch Armstrong. Um, but it was like you know John Cena and yeah. The Rock. You know, yeah. and they would like. But they were like Three Stooges cartoons. Like, uh, and that's how we. That's how we wrote them and how we. How can we you did can them. you see them online somewhere? Yeah, they're still online. They're on Cartoonium. Okay. And there you can you see all 26 of them. They're like three minute shorts. Nice. But they're funny. I actually think they're good. I mean, they're, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's they kind of came and went um, because the toys didn't quite take. Mm-hmm. But, but the shorts, I mean, like they, they, they resonated. We were going to do more. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, this came to that and more, and um, WWE needed to do other, th- needed to focus elsewhere versus yeah, their sure. animated stuff. Gotcha. Um, and then, uh, and then, then I went back to Disney again. <laughs> it's it's the carny lifestyle. It's really the yeah, moral yeah, yeah. story here. Yeah, we're gypsies. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're no gypsies. Man. You know, just you know, just don't shit the bed, kids. That's yeah. that's the moral of the story. As long as you don't shit the bed, no one remembers if you were like you know if you if if you uh, if you sneezed in someone's coffee once. Like, just don't shit the bed. <laughs> Has it happened? No, just no, no, no. I'm just saying. Like, you know, no, everyone no, worries no. so much about like you know mm-hmm. people not liking them or you know whatever. Yeah, for and I'm sure. just saying like you know. It, 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 it's a very cyclical industry and it's important to be very um, Don't kind to people. Well, yeah. no, it's not even, it's, it, yeah, yes. Yeah. But I would just say like, just, just remember that like, you know, we're all, we're all, we're all in this together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. We're all, we're all in the same blender. 
So mm-hmm. sometimes it's it, sometimes you forget that, and it's just you know I would just say, just remember there, yeah. that you will cross paths again. So mm-hmm. just yeah. make sure that when you do, it's pleasant. Yeah, small um, industry. And and I have learned that the hard way, and I won't tell those stories today. I, did, I, 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 signed, I signed a bunch of NDAs with the, with my enemies. And so there it goes. I'm, I'm not allowed to tell those stories. Oh. So I remember uh, earlier, before we kind of started this interview, yeah. you said there were some things that you were kind of like embarrassed to work on. Is that actually true? Or you were like, oh, I don't want to no. mention this one. No, 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 no. I'll tell you. Um, if I can, if I can back it up, yeah, then, sure. Then absolutely not. Okay. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop the bomb. Drop right? the bomb, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. I'll have, I'll have some. Too. He needs booze for that. <laughs> yeah. Let me just take a shot before I tell you this story. All right. A shot of wine. Here you guys. go. You ready, guys? Yeah. Let's hear it. Here. You, what is it? There you go. Coconut Fred's Fruit Salad Island. Yeah. Oh, that's great, man. That's Wait, not. That's nice. not that. Standard, well, right? hold on. Oh, hold yeah. on. To to the outside world, that is a that is a show chasing the SpongeBob drag. Oh, a hundred percent. hundred percent. Let's be yeah. honest. It is, it is, it was, it was, and I was there when it happened. We all knew it. It was Warner Brothers going, SpongeBob yeah. is doing really well. Yeah. What do we have that's like SpongeBob? Uh-huh. And there was a pitch that we had that was not like SpongeBob. Uh-huh. But it was, but it involved a, a character that was a coconut and uh-huh. a bunch of other like fruit characters. And we were actually developing it in a completely different direction. Where oh, yeah. It was going to be like a Pee Wee's Playhouse thing where you open the fridge up and then there's all these weird that characters fun, inside. Yeah. Um, and um, But the show ended up uh, getting developed mm-hmm. into Spongebob. Spongebob. Yeah. yeah. And so wh- where did the pitch go? It was just well, a pitch somebody had like three years ago just sitting on a desk or something? It, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was always in the mix. But yeah, yeah it, it actually, I think the pitch actually predates Spongebob. Oh, or at wow. least for when it got on television. Oh shit, SpongeBob! So they got a lawsuit. Like, yeah, oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah it went like no, they weren't though because it wasn't SpongeBob. Like you look at that original yeah. pitch and it's not. Yeah. Now, where the show went, it, it you know it got interesting. But uh-huh. here's what here's here's why I'm very proud of that show. Yeah. Um, it was one of those things where they said, Matt, we got great news for you. They mm-hmm. took me to dinner. I remember, and I was like, What is it? <laughs> and he goes, We're not picking up your pilot. And I was like, oh, and they go, but you get to work on Coconut Fred. The and best. I went, oh, great. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know. But like, where's the good news? Here, yeah, yeah. yeah, here's my job. Yeah. But here's here's what happened. They paired me up. Um, I'd already been working with Aaron Simpson. Yeah. And we produced it together. I, I got to team up with Marge Dean, who's also very prolific in the animation industry. Mm-hmm. If you don't know who Marge Dean is, you should. She's, uh, she's the president of Women in Animation. Yeah. Uh, among other things, she's 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 been in the industry. Uh, she's she's in there. She mm-hmm. she knows what's going on. Uh, and uh, a writer named Ray De Laurentiis, who is awesome. And he uh, his his last, I think he's writing on. I don't know what he's writing on now, but he was on for a long time. He was on Fairly Odd Parents with Butch Hartman. Sure, and did a lot of that kind of. He's 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 really good at taking like lots of interesting personalities and mixing them all up and putting them in a room and having mm-hmm. it make sense, um, which is what I love about him. Uh, but um, so we decided we decided that when we all got the show we're like we're gonna make this good we're yeah. not we're not gonna make Spongebob mm-hmm. um, and we did we decided background wise we're gonna do you know we're gonna do photo collage you know and this yeah. this actually does predate fish hooks yes, for yeah. the record mm-hmm. oh, really? oh for sure even though I love fish hooks I love everybody yeah. on it I'm just saying this, this, is, this was like 09 oh, oh, yeah that's like a good five, yeah, five, this, five this six was years like, before yeah. fish hooks right yeah cause yeah. this is like 2004 was on fish yeah hooks. Yep, yeah, this is true. Jason, and, Jason and Hirsch. Oh, yeah, Justin yeah. and, and, and Hirsch, Tom yeah. Warburton, who I work with now on Muppet Babies. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, nice. yeah. Nice. Tom Warburton was a fish hooks, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we were on Disney now. Right? Yeah. We were still doing fish hooks. Yep. So, nice. so, uh, so there was that first thing. But now, but here's why I don't regret it. Because despite, we, we, we fought with them on The Voice. Because mm-hmm. we all wanted um, Kevin McDonald. Because mm-hmm. we were like, let's get someone who doesn't have anything, anything like, like SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Yeah. And uh, and and we went back and forth, back and forth, and and we we worked with Rob Paulson, who's a great fucking guy, He's the best, yeah. And I love him to death. And 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 it, and it wasn't it wasn't um, working with him that was anything of an issue because he's a total pro and he yeah. actually when, when we kind of pitched him what we wanted to do with the show he went yeah. with it cool. and he actually adjusted it and, and, and worked with us on it and, and I got to give him a lot of credit for mm-hmm. that because again he got thrown into the mix too you yeah. know I mean like we all were, we're we, this was like they basically it was like when you throw a bunch of bugs in a jar and just shake it yeah. up and it's like see who kills each other yeah. <laughs> uh, but nobody did that was the best part mm. um, but here's what we did and, and, and no one's ever seen this about the show no one's ever gotten the the depth of this show that we added to it. Yeah, let's hear it. Except for one person who wrote an article 
that started off as a scathing, a scathing review of this terrible Spon- uh, SpongeBob, SpongeBob ripoff show, and turned into an understanding of what we were actually doing with the show wow. and why it actually makes sense. Interesting. And what were you actually doing? With Here was the show. Yeah, let's hear it. The show is about God in His Garden of Eden, but He doesn't know that He's God. What? Yes. <laughs> Here's how it goes. Coconut Fred. Anything he can imagine becomes real. Yeah. And he lives on this island with all these other fruit characters who all know what his power is Mm -hmm. and are terrified of him (laughs) and keep trying to like control him and give him rules and stop him from going crazy. But every single time he goes like, I can imagine that it it suddenly happens. Mm -hmm. And so if you watch the intro to the show, the first image is of of an empty ocean and his foot comes in and, and from his foot grows sand. And out of the sand grows the island, and all of a sudden, all the po- characters start popping up. And so that was our, that was what made the show work for us. Mm-hmm. And if you watch every episode, yeah, it that it adds a completely another layer to the show, to the to the point where I could watch it and go, I, I, this is good. This is amazing to me. So you know, was, was that something that, that you? Reminds me of Chalk Zone a little bit. Mm. Yeah, like how there's a god oh, yeah. factor in it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and and again, I I, I feel like we predated Chalk Zone too. Uh, <laughs> probably around the same take time. Credit. We we just we just did Chalk Zone. Yeah, We're like let's just. I was like we just we just read some Chalk Zone. Let's script. take some SpongeBob. We, we changed, let's take some yeah. Chalk Zone. And, and we changed Chalk to Coconut. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Did, but, did you guys did you guys kind of assign it that 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 uh, metaphorical meaning after it was done, or did you do it before going? No, that in? was that was first day in the writers' room. Oh yeah, first day in the writers' room. We're like, we need to give the show some meaning. Oh, nice. And we wow. did, and we went, and and like, and we didn't even. I don't even think we told like the the studio about it. Yeah, we just did it. He's just God, and like he's yeah. just God, and that's how we said it. He's God, and everyone nice. on the crew knew it. Yeah. And we all, and and by the way, it was the most lovely crew I've ever worked with. I mean, it was like. There, there, there's a bunch of people who who are, who are everywhere now. It's like Tony Candelaria, uh-huh. Mindy, Miss Mindy Allen, uh, Mindy Lee, uh, Cynthia Ignacio. Oh, I mean, there's yeah. so. I, I mean, I, uh, Ray Morelli. I always hear that about you know. shows that it, like people don't really genuinely like to work on, but like they always had the best time. It was oh, awesome. Yeah. It was it was a family. I yeah. say that every time. The worst, yeah. The worst shows I've worked on, I have the best friends from. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, because you're all kind of going through the shit together. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. like you're all commiserating and or you're and, laughing and about and it and trying yeah. to make the show as good as possible. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Like with the God element from Coconut Friends, like it gives you something to play with. Yeah, right for sure, for sure. So it's so Danner, what um we're 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 winding up on an hour here, so I okay. want to get into like what you're doing now, what you're involved in now. So I know there's some pretty cool stuff going on right now, and yeah. something that's probably the most prominent is you are currently. And there's a lot more to this, but let me just start with saying you're the voice of Kermit the Frog. That is right true. Now, you are voicing Kermit the Frog. Ba- ba- baby Kermit the Frog. Baby Kermit the Frog. Give us a taste. Hi, hello, everybody. Baby Kermit the Frog here. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. That's cool. Uh, so yes, so that is that is the it just premiered mm-hmm. on Friday this last Friday. Disney the, Junior on Disney We've Junior. We've been waiting to have Matt Danner on because of this. Yeah. Because I was like, I want to talk about the show, but I can't. Yeah. And it's been like two years. But now you can. No, I can. So you've done, you, you do way more than just yeah. the voice of Kermit. Can you give us a rundown of what you're doing on the new Muppet Baby show? So I, de- I developed the show. Um, I, uh, I supervise direct mm-hmm. on the show. Uh, I write on the show. And I do the voice of Kermit. Wow. And this, that, and the other thing. But mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah, those yeah. are like my official titles on mm-hmm. the show. Um, but no, it's um, basically how it went is uh, I went back to Disney. Um, but I actually went to uh, D- uh, DCPI, which is Disney Consumer Products mm-hmm. uh, Publishing and La- uh, Interactive. Okay. And uh, I ended up working for a team uh, at Disney Labs, which is their sort of experimental digital team. And they were like, well, let's experiment with doing like, you know, streaming stuff. Yeah, yeah. And VR and like stuff that isn't TV or movies. Yeah, everyone's doing that now. And, yeah, uh, VR. And, and so we were doing that about three years ago, four years mm-hmm. ago. Um, and we'd actually done a whole other series, which should be coming out soon. Uh, I can't say much about it, but it does star Donald Duck. Um, but uh, and it's and and it and it's not Ducktales. Mm-hmm. It's not Ducktales. But I would say it's it's sort of a compendium to it because oh. we, we we knew that was happening and we we decided to be very respectful Ooh, to the brand. I think I, I think I heard whispers of this. You might have. You might have. It involves two other birds that aren't ducks. Hey. <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but Muppet Muppet Studios ended up coming to live with us mm-hmm. at Labs. 
um, you know, they'd just done their second movie and they were, they kind of found that, you know, they had a lot of energy in the, in the, in the, in the YouTube internet space. Yeah. And so they wanted to expand on that. For sure. Um, but out of that also came the, the, the ABC show the, with the Muppets, mm-hmm. you know, the, the yeah, sort yeah. of the, the office style one. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but meanwhile, the mockumentary. we, yeah. yeah. Uh, on the other hand, we were the ones that kind of said, um, our team sort of said, and, and I, 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 I'm going to take credit for this one. I was the first one that went. What's going on with Muppet Babies? Yeah, yeah. Oh you know? no way. Um, yeah, because so you it was started like, the snowball. Effect. I, I, I would, I would like to think so. I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure. Uh, just, just take credit. I'll take credit. For it. <laughs> but, so it's but, kind of your baby. Muppet Babies is your baby. It, to, yeah, yeah, in a certain way. Yeah. yeah, I will say. I, I, it was, in, it, and the idea was to reintroduce Kermit the Frog yeah. the way he was introduced to me as a kid, which mm-hmm. was in the preschool world. Yeah. To say, look, let's take this awesome brand. Mm-hmm. And let's not, like, let's not, I mean, people were really worried when we said we were going to do this preschool, yeah. but, like, so was Sesame Street. And if you watch those Sesame Street sketches with Kermit and Grover and stuff that you don't see anymore, because Kermit hasn't been on that show since the 90s, mm-hmm. yeah. for the record, that's another reason, because kids don't know who Kermit is. Not anymore, yeah. And that was our whole thing. It's like, well, let's reintroduce him. Um, so we developed a show, and, you know, then we're like, well, do we do it animated? Do we do it? And I said, I said, let's, we got to do Muppets Take Manhattan. Mm-hmm. We got to go right to that thing where they're, where they're real puppets. But then I was like, well, let's do it in CG, because that way we can animate them and we can have them doing all this amazing stuff, but mm-hmm. then we can make them look like felt and make them actually move like puppets. Yeah. Um, so we ended up developing that, and we did like a kind of a test where we worked with um, a company out of Australia called Liquid mm. Animation yeah. and, and did, a, um, uh, did sort of a one-minute like test. And um, as the story goes, I did the scratch for it. For Kermit. For Kermit and for Fozzie and for Piggy, because they the Fozzie and Piggy had no lines, but Kermit mm-hmm. was the one who we had him come in like a puppet and go, mm-hmm. you know, hi everybody. You can do yeah. Piggy's you know. voice. No, my Piggy is like this. <laughs> it's so bad. And like whenever I scratch it, I always have to apologize to the actress uh, Melanie, who's who's amazing yeah. at Piggy. But I was I was I'm like really sorry. She's like no 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 it's fine. <laughs> but but um and then my Fozzie was like waka waka you know like you know but it's okay yeah it's all right but, but 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 Bowser kills it on that yeah yeah you know. Um, oh, Bowser's Fozzie. Huh? Uh, Bowser's Fozzie, yeah. yeah. And that's another thing where it's like, wow. But but here's the funny thing. So so I did all the scratch. Uh, show got sold. Mm-hmm. Disney Junior jumped in. They're like, we want this. And we're like, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, Tom Warburton came on, who's awesome, and, and Eric Shaw, who's our story editor. And then, and then you know, everyone started developing the show. And then, and then people from my team, like Joe Sicta and Chris Moreno, who's our art director on the show still, yeah. who's also very involved with the writing because he's he's, he comes from comics, so he understands art and story and mm-hmm. he's really good mm-hmm. at that yeah. um you know we all started kind of you know formulating the show but then when it came down to audition time um i was kind of like can i try you know because because a lot of people were using my voice as the as the sort of the the uh i don't want to say the gold standard but as the as the reference yeah. for what they wanted for auditions and we did hundreds of auditions hundreds of people auditioned for this and by the time we narrowed it down we had like 40 for each 40 actors for each character wow and i threw my hat in the ring and i threw it in rant i threw it in anonymously you know and got and i made that first cut and then i was in the room and then here we all are listening to voices and i hear mine come up and everyone looks at me they're like danner (laughs) you know and i'm like i'm not gonna vote for me i'm not gonna vote for me i'm gonna vote for all the other ones that i think are 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 real are good because i'm not I don't want this to be nepotism. I don't want to. I don't want to give myself the job. I want to. I want to get it for real. Sure. And every step of the way, I did it. And I probably auditioned about six times. Wow. Wow. Um, as it because the, the you know it just kept on getting whittled because this is a big deal you know yeah. and, 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 and Fozzie and everybody. I mean, we went through we went through a lot of rounds. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I got the gig. Nice. Yeah. And suddenly, there you go. And it was awesome. That's awesome. And you're also doing all of the voices that Jim did. Yeah. Right? And so, so yeah. you're doing who else? Uh, I do uh, Waldorf. Uh, you know, he's like one of the old guys that talks like this with the, you know, <laughs> and he laughs with the with the other guy. Uh, yeah. uh, a Statler and Bowser to Statler. Oh, nice. You guys are, um, wow. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're pairing us up a lot. Yeah, um, for sure. I do, I do Beaker, but that's like, me, me, me. I mean, that's, you know, that's just me. Like, that's how I talk to my baby. Yeah, you know? for sure, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I, I can hit that sort of tonality of uh. me. Where I can sing songs in it too. And yeah, so yeah. I do that. Sing, so, sing songs um, in Beaker's voice. Yeah, like Impressive. yeah, no. <laughs> uh, and then uh, and then I'm doing um, uh, I'm doing Rolf, yeah. uh, oh, who's wow. going to be making an appearance, and I'm not going to do the voice though. Because, oh no. Because uh, and, no, there's an interesting there's an interesting magic to that one. Oh, so, okay, cool. You know, so but, we have to be on the edge of the seats of. Uh, yeah, to be on the edge of your seats on that one. But, 
makes till, it, till Rolf an makes an appearance. No uh, but but yeah, but mostly it's Kermit. It's Kermit, yeah. and uh, you know, and it's good because uh, one of the good things is you know we we do a lot of scratch at mm-hmm. the studio, so it kind of yeah. helps that I can sort of do the scratch that is easily matched. For sure. You know? yeah, yeah. For yeah, for Kermit, you know. Nice. Um, I do my best for the other characters, but it's no good. I usually have to slow down, you know, because I'm like, I do scratch for, if I do scratch uh-huh. for like Bowza, you know, ba- you know, because again, and you guys know Bowza. Everyone yeah, knows sure. Bowza, We had him on right? the show. He's yeah, the most he popular like person. We had Eric Bowza yeah. on the show. He's like, he's like, he's like the Ferris Bueller of animation. Did I use that reference already? Yep. Oh, you did, okay. but you know what? No. Second time I'm going to use it again. I'm going to use it again. Sorry, Tom. Yeah, I don't know if it was on camera. He's the other Ferris Bueller of animation. Uh, but no, he's, uh, you know, uh, he's just a, a dynamo and, and so, but I try, I try to do it. And again, like I said, I, I do like the, ver- the worst version of it where I go, yeah. Hey, I'm Fozzie. And I just do it really slow <laughs> and I go, you make it good. You, yeah. you do, you do what you do. But, nice. um, but no, it's been, it's been really cool. It's been a dream come true. And, uh, and the show came together pretty, pretty well. I mean, yeah. like I gotta say, like we just premiered and it looks good and I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm happy with it. I mean, of course I got notes, you know, you always have notes, but, mm. but at the end of the day, when I look at it, I go, mm-hmm. you know what, this is, this is, this is exactly what we set out to do. Mm-hmm. If the Muppet fans will be cool with it, you know, I mean, of course there's going to be that one, that one guy on the internet that's like, you know, Ugh, that's, I don't remember it like that. And it's like, or, yeah. Oh, I see some Illuminati signs in there. Yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> Well, they're not completely wrong. I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's a conspiracy. <laughs> um, but I think I think we're being true to the characters. We're yeah. being true to the we're being true to the fans. Yeah, for sure. And we're just trying to like reintroduce it to the kids and go like, of course, yeah, know. it's yeah. missing in the kids' so, lives right now. Exactly. Yeah. I have a question because you do have you do have a baby. Mm-hmm. Um, and did you did you have her while you were working on this? Yeah. Like in the middle of it. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. Just just when we just got started, she was born. Has she inspired you in any way oh, yeah. on this show? She's the original Muppet baby. She's the first like production baby, technically. I think. Oh, that's we, so cute. I, I believe. Do we have another kid on the show? I think we did. Well, Bowser's yeah. Bowser's kid was born, but a little bit before. But you know, and oh, and Jessica DeChico's about to have a baby, Ooh, and a she plays she plays Summer Penguin. Oh, the okay. The, the new Muppet. The new Muppet. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot about that yeah. new Muppet. Yeah. And uh, she's great, and uh, you know, so we there's some of it. There's, there, there's some of it babies on the show. Yeah, That's some so of it babies, babies on Muppet the show. Of babies, babies. But it has definitely influenced me a lot because again, it's like sometimes I look at her and I'm like, well, you know, because I uh, to be totally fair, when I would warm up for Kermit, because mm-hmm. I will say something about the voice that's very interesting is like it's not like a voice. Yeah. It's not like you're going, hey, I'm doing a voice. It's like I literally have to like squeeze my throat and pull it out in order to sort of get this kind of nasal but like also in the deep part of my throat and yeah. do that whole thing and it's not uh it early in the morning it's not easy yeah. and it's almost like I, I equate it to squeezing a tube of toothpaste mm-hmm. where just whatever morning phlegm you have just sort of starts coming up while you're recording and then i'm yeah. i'm sitting there going sorry sorry yeah so i started so i started talking as kermit to my daughter while mm-hmm. changing her diaper because she'd wake up at like five or six yeah and and i would go oh hi old little girl like okay here we go we're gonna change your diaper and we're gonna get you ready that's not gonna gonna scar i know it's not gonna scar but yeah (laughs) oh that's so cute though but it worked yeah and then i would get into the records and i was like i did diaper duty this morning i'm ready to rock thank you (laughs) that's a cute story for later yeah, I used I to do the the Kermit voice for you when you were a little yeah. baby when I changed your diapers. You helped me not get fired. <laughs> yeah. so that was that was something I was worried about because you know I mean again it's like I feel like no one ever said this but I feel like there was an air of we'll see how he does. Mm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know you proved but, yourself, but not but not Tom and the gang, not my gang, the gang. You yeah, know, you actually no, everyone was so supportive and and Debbie from the Muppets and everyone was so supportive. So I I, I really have nothing to complain about. Um. You met your wife in animation too, right? No, we met doing stand up. Oh. You did yeah. stand up? I did stand up for a little while. That's interesting. Another chapter. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So uh, she, you both did stand up. We both did stand up. We actually met through Carlos Alas Rocky, who was the voice of Rocco. Oh, Rocco, right. Yeah, yeah. he was on Reno 911. Yeah. He's uh, Laszlo. Yeah, I think. also, oh, he's well known cool. the voice of the, uh, so the Taco, 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 Bell. Taco Bell dog. Yeah, you, you'll get a Taco Bell. Yeah, that's cool. That's so cool. Oh, sorry. So no, yeah, and he does a lot of animation, and so he, uh, him and I got along, and he told me that you know, and, and he was like, hey, you know, you should probably do, some, you should try doing stand up, and I was like, I'd love to, and I was doing a lot of pitching 
to like you know because yeah. I do development and I was like well you know that might be a good, nice exercise would definitely for help yeah for sure. and I did a bunch of uh, open mics and stuff and I did it with uh, I did it with Bows actually yeah like we, we did we did what? we did, yeah, did open one. mics together we did one here yeah we did one in this house <laughs> yeah what yeah, wow which was a, which impressive. Was a, uh, big one. Did you take the house down or was it like yeah. you do oh, parties yeah. and stuff here? I think we Ab- did. did you we Abed, Abed, Abed was on that one. Abed was on that as well. Yeah. He's Abed stands up. I want to come to one yeah. of your parties here. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'll let you know when we have one. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Good Kid, baby. Yeah, kids, kids change things, but yeah. um, but yeah. So it turns out, uh, Carlos booked me and Annie both on the same show, mm. and, and then, then love it for six. It's for well, not quite. I, oh. I flirted with her. And she she very she very um, respectfully turned me down to the point when I went I just got denied but also well played you know what I mean yeah, like yeah. and um, oh, I love but this. lo and behold we both ended up getting booked on the same monthly show after that which is okay. an animation comedy show called the Sketchy Comedy Show can't get rid of me in, at Flappers and Burbank and we were yeah, both on the sure. show so every week we would have meetings here or every month we would have meetings here and to plan out what we were going to do for the flirt. show yeah. and every week we got to know each other and after about a year of that uh, finally she let me take her out on a date and uh, we got married and oh stuff not right God. away it's been a while but, but yeah <laughs> and so that's how we met we got married yeah. And now it's so funny because now like I'm I help her in her world where it's like oh she needs she needs someone to like be in a scene or something yeah. it's like we need a Hollywood lawyer and I'm like okay I put on a suit and I go like I need my client to have the, you know and I do yeah. like comedy sketches and stuff and then she actually comes back and helps with writing and animation with me wow. like she's she's actually doing a bunch of stuff right now um, for various wow uh, cool companies that, you guys are balancing um, each other out pretty well there. we're balancing each other that's out that's so cute nice yeah. man very nice. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. You got a pretty long and, t- like I said, rich tapestry. Of yeah. Things. So, as we're winding things down here, I would love to know if you have any last minute or words of advice for any any aspiring animation industry yep. professionals out there. Something that just sums it all up. All right. Yes. And, and actually, um, when, when I do a storyboard class... Is this for the baby or not? No, 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 that's, that's a dog toy. That's why it crinkles. That's, yeah. that's not, that's, oh, no, don't that's, worry, don't worry. That's not a bag of chips, everybody. That's, yeah. That is okay, a dog chew toy. No, 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 this is for good. This isn't the most I, important I, I time of the interview to, yeah, or anything. Yeah. Don't worry about it. All right, yeah, All right. you want me to get deep now? Yeah, let's okay. get deep. Let's do no, it. No, no, I, I, I feel like I got deep when I said, like, look, you know, that voice inside of you always tells you to stop. Yeah. We talked about that. Here's what I, here's what I talk about whenever I teach a class. Let's hear it. I always have a uh, I, you, I you little you rascal. While you're doing this? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, he's good. I sure. like it. Meeseeks is the monkey <laughs> wrench in the animation this industry. This is like this he's is like really and the meaning to life is and it's like oh, <laughs> every time, time we get yeah. it's like it's like every every like sitcom trope like yeah, they're yeah, trying yeah. to tell them the most important yeah. advice and the radio and cuts then, out. It's like and then yeah. dog. all right. Mm. So uh, so I'll keep it quick. Okay. So here's. So we, we talked about not giving up and reaching for the stars and not sure. listening to the voice and all that kind of stuff. Sure, and there's sure. always ways to do that. But here's something I, whenever I teach, and I, I teach different various classes now and again or workshops mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, this is something I always say at the end. I go, let's talk about professionalism. Mm, interesting. Because this is something that isn't actually about professionalism, but it's also about just having a set of rules that you follow so that you don't lose the job. Yeah. And number one, Answer your phone. <laughs> Please. I don't care that you have a deadline. If you get a call from your boss, yeah. answer the phone. You know what's so yeah. funny? I feel like that's a generation thing. I think that starts with like my generation where we're all it, afraid no, of the phone. It was me too. Oh, really? Yeah, when your boss okay. calls and you know you got something due tomorrow and you're scared and you're like, I don't know if I'm going to get it done, what do you do? You don't answer the phone. Yeah. Just answer the phone. Okay, and that leads me into number two. Manage expectations. Mm. This is very important. If you know at any point when you're working on something that you don't think you're going to hit the deadline, don't get deadline-itis. And deadline-itis is when you say, I'll have it done tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and you say, I'll have it done tomorrow. Oh, no. Mm. And then tomorrow comes and you say, I'll have it done tomorrow. And then you don't answer your phone. <laughs> Sorry, I keep saying that, but this is this is important. Here's what you do. If you know a week before your deadline is that you're probably not going to get it done, call your superior or call whomever you know on the show and manage your expectations and say, look, I'm doing my best. I'm not sure I'm going to get it done. I guarantee you, nine times out of ten, 
they will help you hit the deadline. They will give you a, someone to help. Yeah. They will say, you know what? Thank you for telling me. Maybe we can swap your rotation with somebody else's rotation. There's always something that can be done. As long as you manage their expectations. Yeah. Hmm. That is when the I, secret. I hate when I get that question. Like, how long do you think it's going to take? And I'm like, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But but you know when the deadline is. Yeah. But if you're, if you're a week away, then, you know, it's the same thing with showing up on time. Like, yeah. if you know you're not going to be so, somewhere on time, don't tell somebody that you're going to be there on time when you know you're not. Because we all have ways. We all have GPS, right? Mm-hmm. Let's just say you're on your way to a meeting. You know you're going to be 30 minutes late. You know, people know. you know it. You know it. Call them up. Say, hey, I'm, I'm, I, I'm really sorry. Call them up 10 minutes, five minutes before the meeting. Mm-hmm. Before. You always have to hit it before. I'm going to be late. Nine times out of 10, they will say, all good. I'll just do some emails. Let me know. Versus them waiting in a room for you. Yeah. For 30 minutes. And now, you're, now they're pissed off and now the meeting sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Manage expectations. That's uh, I think it's the first time we've ever had that advice. That's well, great. That's it. Well, yeah. From the director. Yeah, yeah. for sure. That's yeah, it. And it's sure. so easy. Just like every, it's a family. Every show you're on is like a family. Don't lie to your family. Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to your family. Just say, look, I, I, I'm not going to make it. And I'm telling you. And I've been in that situation too. And I know that somewhere out there, there are people listening to this and going, <laughs> well, I'm glad he finally learned his lesson Yeah, because it happened to me too. And this is not coming from me yeah, telling no, you what to perfect. do. The student has become the teacher. Yeah. It comes from experience. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. That's do, you have, it. do you have anything else to add, Danner? Do you, to wrap this up, any other last minute things to say? Maybe not advice, but just anything to shout out to everybody? I actually want to, I want to, I want to compliment you guys right now. I want to oh. say you guys have been doing this like a year now. Yeah, about yeah. a year. Um, I remember way back in the day, uh, Brian was like, hey, we want to film this thing in your office. Is that cool? And I was like, yeah, man, come on. Mm-hmm. And like, I mean, again, I, and you know me, it's, I, I just, I, I like supporting art and whatever we're doing. Yeah. Anything art and adjacent. people. Yeah. And I love that you guys are still at it. I love that you guys are like printed now. I saw yeah. that in the, I, I, I saw that magazine. picture of you guys in the magazine. Yeah. You're like, like oh, that's man. my place. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, look, there's my couch. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I think that's totally awesome. And, Thanks, uh, you know, I just got to give you guys a lot of credit and just want to thank you for having me on the show. Yay. And, and uh, you know, thanks for finally inviting me on after a year. I'm, 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 we needed to get the good. I was out the holdout. I was yeah. the holdout. <laughs> I was the holdout. No, but I think it's really cool, and, and I gotta say, just keep it up, and thanks, you know, man. hopefully, I, and again, you know, this is important because I think people need to hear from people like you, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, and about like you. Yeah, oh, Indeed, well, no, for sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, I mean, but no, but I think it's important. I want to counter that by saying, without you, it wouldn't be possible. Yeah. In this place, dude. Like, really. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it, man. I mean, this is the perfect space yeah. for it, and you're, yeah. we're killing it here. So thank you so much. Yeah. You've been so hospitable to us since the very beginning. You're just like, yeah, come on. Anytime. Yeah. You want some food? You want some drinks? You got to pee? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. We, got, we, got we got a like, bathroom? Yeah. I know. We got, like, one of them hotel-style ice trays. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know? That's a cool part keep of it classy the show. here. Yeah. We keep it classy. We're for real. Season two upgrades. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got some new mics. We got some wine. We took the, the crinkly things off the table. That's true. Oh, yeah, well, that's except for the thing. dog. Yeah. Except for the crinkly yeah. dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, that's okay. Hey. That's booze yeah. toy, yeah. So, Danner, oh. where where can people find you online? Are you an, are you, do you have an online presence at all? I'm on Twitter. Okay. It's at Maddie Danner. At Maddie Danner? Yeah. And, like, I mean, uh, if I can keep up with it, I do usually do, like, a daily doodle. You know, oh, cool. Or, oh, cool. Um, uh, but I, I like to just talk about stuff. I usually like, you know, uh, comment on like, you know, other people in the industry's Sweet. stuff and tweets. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, I mean, like that's pretty much it. The tweeters. Um, I have an email. <laughs> that's kind of cool. I do. Yeah. Want, uh, I mean, I don't know if you want to no, give, no, give no, that yeah, out yeah. right now. Yeah. Like, no, like, but uh, no, but uh, no. Twitter's really. I mean, that's kind of where I I I I, yeah. I found a nice spot for myself because it's sort of like the perfect mix between like Facebook and Instagram, mm-hmm. where you can keep up with people, but you can also just put up a picture if you want, or just put up a joke. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. sure. That's kind of what I do. You know. I notice it's like very like I don't know people like to write quotes or funny things on there. Yeah, Folks it can shout. get heavy, but I don't get heavy. I just usually try to keep it light. Keep yeah, politics good. out of it. Yeah, people like seeing that stuff. Yeah, yeah. sure, man. You, you know, need, why not? You yeah. need to laugh. You need to laugh, especially now. Go, go or not, or just sure. look at something. You know, let me Danner? promote my show. Yeah, yeah sure. Matty M A T T Y D A N N E R M A T T Y. That's my last name, Matty. So what? M A T I though. Oh, close. I was about to go, whoa, Sabrina, Maddie, Dan. People call me Sabrina, Maddie, though. She starts bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> she 
just yeah. a ghost comes out of you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so so before we wrap it up, what does the future hold for Matt Danner? What is what is in your future? Um. Well, you know, I'm doing Muppets, uh, and that's that's uh, hopefully going to be, be a long. That's run. hopefully going to be a long yeah. run. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always working on stuff, telling new stories. Um, any, any personal projects that you want to shout about? Uh, not yet. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, I have so many NDAs that, no, yeah. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 I just, uh, 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 yeah, I'm working, I'm working on some originals. I'm working on some originals. Nice. And, um, there's been some traction. Nothing you can talk about. Uh, nothing I can talk about yet, but, uh, there has been some traction. Mm-hmm. I can't say that. Official traction. Ooh. Um. A step in the right direction. But, yeah, but, you know, I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to make, I, I'm just trying to make art and stories and characters and work with people that I like and, and have fun you know, doing it. I'm just trying to do the yeah. I'm trying to do the animation thing, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, but right now it's 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 all Muppets all the time. Nice. <laughs> For hopefully the unforeseeable future, but you know. For infinity. I mean. Yeah. Nice man. That's uh, pretty intense. Yeah. Muppets all the time, twenty four seven Muppets. All yeah, time. I know, right? <laughs> That's exciting. So, Sabrina, Yay. Brian, do you guys have anything to add? Did you want to do a um, Brian's, yeah, words, of Brian's words of wisdom? Yeah, I was wisdom. trying to think of something I could possibly <laughs> add to that. If anything, I'll just say um, it kind of coalesces with like how we met. Is that like you'll you'll go through the industry and like again like some of the worst shows you're on, you're on, you'll meet some of your best friends. And mm. We were on a show that was not great. So I told the, the the good story, but yeah. you can tell the other one. Yeah, I'll just keep this. You were, you guys were on a terrible show together. <laughs> uh, there was a little known show called Out of Jimmy's Head, which was when oh Cartoon I remember that Network Cartoon was, Network, yeah. Yeah, Cartoon yeah. Network decided we wanted to do live action. Yeah. On our Cartoon Network, mm-hmm. and uh, part of it was the live action, and Danner was in charge of uh, supervising, directing the animation that we had. Mm. And uh, at the time, I had just learned Flash from Tony Miller, who is our mutual friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's how I got on the show, because Tony couldn't do the gig and gave me the test, and I did the test, and I came over there for Cartoon Network. Yeah. And then, uh, this test was crazy, too. Like, <laughs> oh, he, yeah. did, like, he, like, he had right. the character like turning into shark teeth and stuff, and I'm like, man, this guy ain't using stock. Hire him, quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Drew. Uh, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and part of that was, like, uh, you were always doing the, the lay of, lo, uh, layout boards right. for, for a lot of the show and like sometimes like all right you gotta draw on top of the the uh live action yeah i was like i can help with that i can draw and like you gave me some of those boards so i was like yeah it's like please because I, I was i was on set yeah okay and i was the guy so that, on the live action i was side, i was the guy that had the ping pong ball uh-huh. on a stick <laughs> that was acting with the characters and going like yeah. hey kid here we go and like how does that look okay you know it was, yeah, it was, it was kind of, i mean listen i got a lot of live action experience out of that which was pretty cool and i've done other projects uh with that knowledge mm-hmm. but live you know, action but, is always late which means that ain't yeah. animation time so we had less time to animate oh yeah we had no and then i had to, and then i was like i was on set in downey from seven to five and then i'd have to go to cartoon network after and work and we worked until like eight yeah. probably oh my God. Yeah, yeah, i never slept on that show but yeah, that was a rough well, at least day. it was a huge hit, and it had forty seasons. Now. Right? Oh yeah, no, it, it did really well. It did so well. Yeah, but uh, but the lesson but from that we, was no, we bonded over uh, One Piece. One Piece, yeah, because yeah. you had One Piece okay. and Mega was, Man stuff. Well, he office. was the only person I'd met so far that like knew what One Piece was. Oh yeah. wow! Because I was the only kid in my He's high school about One Piece. And Ditto, like yeah. no one else I knew in the business knew One Piece. Yeah, like, well, well, like, well now we have a yeah we have a game. We started. Yeah, we started that shit. Yeah, I, yeah wish, I wish we could pan over to the left because it's just like a one piece shelf. Yeah, I got. There. I have a whole one piece shelf over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the quick note is the fact that like the fact I said, <laughs> "Hey, do you need help with this specific job?" Because mm. I know it's something I could do. Mm. That's something you're allowed to do in mm. the industry. It's just like, hey, I there's a need that needs fulfilling. Right? Yep. Yeah. Mm. Let me take the initiative and try it out. No, yes. Yeah, yeah, and there's no sure. problem with asking. Yeah. Ooh, can I add on to that? Mm-hmm. Go for it. Um, this is good advice for anybody. Ooh. Was that your neck? That was my neck. <laughs> I thought that was the dog toy again. I felt, I felt pretty good. That was I got gross. It again. Uh, I'm like right here. Uh, Anytime no. you give advice, we need to interrupt you with some kind of crinkle. Yeah, yeah, no, it's Come good. Point. It's good. Yeah, yeah it's good. <laughs> it adds to the moment. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Um, uh, here's here's the thing. It, remember, remember when you're asking for help, quote unquote. It's better to ask for advice mm. because advice is always free. Okay. Help is help costs something. When you say, "Can you help me?" It means like, "Oh, now I got to move your couch." But you go, "Hey, can I have some advice?" Yeah. Everybody's got advice, and story. sometimes that advice turns into help. Yeah, for sure. Especially when that's advice that they think they can help you with. So, for instance, building off of what Brian just said, when he said, "Hey, like, 
you know, what do I, I, you didn't say I want to do this. You said, what do I need to do to get into more of this? I think so, yeah. And I went, oh, well, here, <laughs> do it. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And what turned it, when went from advice turned into actual help. Uh -huh. And that's important that too. That makes good point. Because then, because yeah, you point. don't want to put people out. Because that's, you know, how many times it's like, will you read my script or will you do yeah. it? And it's like, how about just like, hey, how do I do this? Sure, yeah. And, and half the time the conversation will be answered with, you know, not only, um, uh, kindness, but yeah. like, you know, like, let me help you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think the key word there is conversation. You're having a conversation with the person. Yeah. You're not asking for stuff for from stuff. them. Yeah. 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 Give me this. Give me this. Let's talk yeah, about because it. Because that, really, that gets yeah. really demanding. It's just like, I don't have time to devote to your need, but like if we have mutual needs that we can yeah. fulfill, there, go for it. Yeah. 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 And if you, and if you don't have the mutual need, the advice is still free. Mm hmm because you can still in that conversation give them the advice. Yeah. I just I just had a, a you know a writer friend of mine say how do I break into animation and I go, "Well, for writing, if you don't have any animation experience, it's going to be tough." But you have production experience and that might be a better way to sort of like get in, yeah. you know, and then find your way and then and he said, "Well, thank you for the advice." And that was it. And it was 20 minutes. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. Versus like, "Oh, now I got to like, you know, Take this guy's resume all Can over you town. Help me get you know a what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, for sure. it's just it's just perspective, you know. Mm -hmm. It's all about the way things are framed. And for we've sure. been friends ever since. Yep. It's, <laughs> been, wow. it's been a bromance up till ten years. There. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Ten years. It been ten? It's I feel like it's, oh, been no, it's been longer been than that. Yeah, it's, it's been, been longer than that. Jesus. Yeah. Out of Jimmy's head was 2006, huh? Yeah. Wow, man. I have it on DVD, Blu-ray. No, I'm joking. No, I'm joking. I don't, I don't. You can barely find it on YouTube. <laughs> no. Yeah, you can, but there's some teenager talking over it going like, what a terrible show. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. awesome. We had fun. We yeah. had fun. I mean, at least, uh, that's the whole thing. As long as you have fun on the shitty show you're yeah. on, that's what matters. Cool. So I think that's pretty much it. I don't know. Do we have anything else to add, guys? No, we got it. Anybody? Anything? Anything? It. Awesome. I well, love you, you all. Oh, yeah. thanks, Danner. We love you, too. Look him up on Twitter at, at Maddie Danner, at right? Maddie Danner, yeah. At Maddie Danner. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been the Ass Podcast Animation Success Stories, and that was Matt Danner's Ass. Thanks for being here, Matt. We'll see you guys next yeah. time in the Ass. See yeah. you guys. Nice Peace. to be the Ass. Thank you. <laughs> He's the Ass of every joke. I'm always the Ass. See you guys. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. Goodbye.